Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Now if you're new, consider hitting that subscribe button and of course don't forget to give this video a like. It truly does help the channel out. So I'm going to be sneaking this video in between my 13 Nights of Fright series. I had totally forgot to mention this um, a couple weeks ago. Let's talk about season one of Oni Murders in the building. So season one just wrapped on Hulu this past a Tuesday. This is a Hulu original and it was a wonderful 10 weeks. Yes, you guys, we get 10 episodes. Each of them are about 30 minutes long or so, give or take a minute or two. So that makes it a very easy, pleasant binge for you now that the show has come to an end. This is probably one of my favorite new series of 2021. So I am going to maybe give a few spoilers here and there, just kind of pre-warn you, but there's going to be no major spoilers. Do not worry. I shall not reveal the murderer or murderers. So when three strangers share an obsession with true crime and suddenly find themselves wrapped up in one, when a grisly death occurs inside their exclusive Upper West Side apartment building, the trio suspects murder and employs the precise knowledge of true crime to investigate the truth. Perhaps even more explosive are the lies they tell one another. Soon the endangered trio come to realize a Killer might be living among them as a race to decipher the mounting clues before it's too late. So like many people out there, I too am a true crime fan. Give this video a like if you like true crime. Favorite is probably here on YouTube, actually, uh, Bailey Siri with her murder mystery makeup Monday. Maybe that's going to be it before she tried to copyright me. Uh, I really like her stuff. I honestly just listen, listen to the story. I'm usually driving or doing something, so I never actually see the makeup part of it. I feel podcasts within the last few years have become really popular, especially during COVID. I feel like everybody and their mama came out with the podcast. Now, we do have a very unexpected trio here with Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez. Yes. A very odd trio that you probably never thought that you wanted, needed, but let me tell you something. This is a trio that you very much want in your life, and I am happy I have it in my life now as well. Of course, we do have that a very iconic comedy duo between Shore and Martin, and let's just face it, they're going to bring in like the older crowd in, and then we add Selena Gomez into the mix. She's going to bring some, some to it. She's going to bring the younger crowd, and we just get this amazing trio that works, you guys. So despite the 40 year old age gap selena's uh character is actually basically like the grown-up within the trio itself i also feel like selena is playing like a well at the beginning i feel like she was playing like a small little version of alex from wizards i don't know like i got that sense from her just kind of like that dry witty humor that she has i would love to see her in a movie or a show with jason bateman just with that they both have that dry witty humor and i think they would make like a great little movie or show or something or even him like having a guest spot in this show because it has been confirmed i'm gonna go ahead and jump to it it has been confirmed that this um has been renewed for a second season and there are in production, you guys. Oh my God. Let's get to know these characters a little bit. First up is Charles, and that's played by Martin. He plays this like socially anxious former TV actor who was like on this very cheesy TV show called Brazos. Then we have extravagant theater director Martin, and oh my God, he does so good in this uh, show, you guys. Like, I feel like this is like a little comeback, just a little bit comeback for him, because I really haven't seen him in too many things anymore, or any like real good things anymore. And well, he is a theater director. He is not the greatest at like picking, you know, shows and stuff. So he is uh, somebody who has money issues and somebody also who doesn't have the greatest relationship with his son. And then we have closed off millennial artist Mabel played by Gomez. Yes, she does have this older name. Yes, they do poke fun at it just in the first episode and i'm glad that they only poke fun at it once because that is a joke that definitely could have gone sideways or could have gone wrong or literally could have just been tired some if it's something that they kept going and just to make matters even worse or better or whatever she loves to knit 
she's a knitter all right a millennial knitter and let's be wary of those needing needles we also have some recurring and guest stars we have jane lynch we have nathan lane amy ryan tina fey and sting yes sting plays a version of himself here i bet he had a lot of fun with it it was it's just a, i'll give you a little spoiler with his character he was a suspect at one point a very strong chance the killer is musical superstar sting the guy from you too oh! only murders in the building really worked on so many levels you guys because firstly we have comedy that's not forced either you're laughing or you're just kind of like enjoying it for what it is the writing is just so clever here and the delivery of it is so good that it, it's just it's not forced like i said we got two iconic comedians here and martin honestly you guys he still got it for his age i mean he does some physical comedy there there's like a whole leonardo dicaprio moment you know from the wolf of wall street and then there's this like very like warm friendship that like built up between these three outcasts you know they were just like some lonely people each going through their own fair share of loneliness and they're just kind of learning to like open up and experience life all over again this show is so well written you guys i mean it's just full of like twists and turns and then we get like a lot of like little clues sprinkled in there there's like some love stories happening in there as well and it works again it's not forced y'all already know how i feel about these like forced love stories in certain situations but no it like it works here you guys before i do give you my last few thoughts on the series if you haven't already again don't forget to give this video a like it truly does help the channel out hit that subscribe button i am still trying to hit 400 subscribers i've been trying to hit that for quite some time so hopefully you can help me get to that goal that would be amazing don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that i post something new if you're watching this in october if you're new check out my halloween series i'm doing 13 nights of fright this video is kind of being snuck in between there don't forget to follow me on my social media honestly the best place to find me will be instagram i'm on there all the time if you want to get to know me a little bit better um i do a little kind of behind the scenes here and there so this show is quirky enough to like really get you interested in it it has a very interesting plot and very endearing characters that you actually care about you get great character development you get backstories that kind of like unravel like they're they're obviously they're back their backstories duh that's what a backstory is but like it, it like blends in you guys with what's currently happening within each individual episode <laughs> i don't know why i'm going ooh. it's because you love a fabulous ensemble cast and are in the mood for a murder mystery show with a little dash of dark humor then only murders in the building is the show for you yes you guys there's like a little bit of dark humor there's a whole little uh another little spoiler a little cat leg missing piece frozen deal to it I can't, I'm doing this. we're gonna cut um I like the emotion. Keep that. I kind of need you to enunciate better. Do you have anything? The crying is covering the dialogue. Oh, that's a good, that's a good note. Okay. Let me know, like, if you've seen the show, what did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Was it just not for you? Now, did you guess the killer before it was revealed? I honestly never suspected that particular person. So I was like, oh, shit. I mean, at one particular point, I was like, maybe it's you. But then I'm like, no, nah, it can't be you. I was really thinking it was somebody else. But like, no. It was that person. Oh, you guys are so good. It's getting a large popcorn, you guys. I don't even think I really... Do I rate my series? I don't remember if I do. I probably do. I've only done a few. I don't do too many series. I am trying to do more series towards the end of the year. But I think I may have done that in the past. I don't know, you guys. It's getting a large popcorn. It's freaking awesome. I can't wait for season two. Let me know down below. What did you think about it? Um, maybe put like a spoiler alert deal if you're going to do any kind of spoilers down there. Alright guys, that is it for me today. Until next time, I'll see you guys at concessions. Bye.